over time that it has been a waste of effort. The question is that the committee has considered the universal credit and job seekers allowance, work search and work availability requirements, limitations, amendment regulations 2022. Chris Stevens. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Chair. It's uh, good to see a, a friend of uh, working people in the chair because I think it's uh, important when we're discussing this issue. I have a number of concerns which are similar to that outlined by the uh, shadow front bench and that is particularly around the culture that may develop as a result of these changes and particularly around the issue of sanctions and it seems that the government has rolled back on its commitments to the ministers aware that I'm a member of the department of work and pension select committee we were being advised as a select committee that what the department was looking at is introducing a warning system or a yellow card system of sanctions rather than sanction people right away. And the problem with these particular proposals is that it could try and force people into taking a, a work that's unsuitable hours for someone with children, for example, or someone with caring r r responsibilities, or people <clears throat> who may be forced into a zero hour contract. There, I take the view, uh, Chair, that. Um, if someone's offered a zero or contract uh, and they're offered it, it's not for everyone. Um, it may suit some people, but uh, in fact, you know, there's a lot of people who can't take a zero or contract job. They could very well find themselves under these proposals receiving a sanction uh, because they have refused that offer of a zero or contract job. Now, the, the culture is going back to a culture which I thought that we'd managed to persuade the government to step away from. And so can I ask the Minister, is it the Department's intention, because it did a pilot, to look at introducing a yellow card or a warning system before someone is uh, sanctioned <coughs> um, uh, during the, the period when they're trying to find work? Because for, for some people, th th they, they do have to look at their caring responsibilities or the culture where some people are, 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 are in work where they have no others until they receive a text message and they're told the first person to turn up gets the ship. There doesn't seem to be anything uh, stopping these particular pra uh, practices. And I think my, my other concern is that it doesn't really address the problem of in work poverty. Uh, we, we had a discussion this morning at the Select Committee. The Minister was there in relation to universal credit and childcare costs. And it was revealed by, um, by, by officials that someone who could be working 30 hours would get less money than if they worked 25 hours because of the way the uh, universal credit system works. So I have a very real concern around that. And I think that the, the, the other issue is in relation to poverty pay. We're going to be forcing people into work um, on minimum wage only. That's, of course, the jobs that are advertised in the national minimum wage because we know the Department of Working's website sometimes advertises jobs which are not in the national minimum wage. So I would hope that the uh, Minister will answer questions around the sanctions regime because there's a very real fear here that what, what we're trying to do is force people into work if they don't take the job for sanction and that, that doesn't uh, and should not apply to everybody. And I hope that we're not going to go back to the culture, the uh, sanctions culture that we saw in films like I, Daniel Blake, because I think if we're going back to that culture, then I think that that's going to be damaging to many people in this country. Thank you. Thanks, Chair.